one question yeah. they're asking you is uh if you take a university a premium university in sri lanka it's ranked 794 assum assum is ranked at 774 uh, uh how important is this rank uh when you when you are to select your your future degree very interesting question actually it is true um but the thing is unfortunately uh in in smu is not a full tradition uh, it is not a full university meaning we do not have medicine we do not have engineering we do not have biology so the qs ranking if you probably either looking at the times ranking or the qs ranking you we is a bit difficult to rank smu this way but if you rank the smu business school is on par is uh, probably for one of the young university is one of the top ranking university now i do not believe and um, please uh, forgive me if i say this none of the none of the government university in singapore is solely is lowly ranked in us and the eu is world ranking 11 so smu is the third university in singapore now because it is not a full fledged university in a sense that it doesn't have engineering doesn't have medical it's very hard for them to rank the the, the university overall however please take a look at smu's ranking in terms of research smu in terms of the business school i think smu's mba and business school outranks in us as well um or rank as as good as what in us is if most of you understand I, i guess most sri lankans know in us more than at the rest of the university because i think many years ago there are a lot of sri lankans who are here as lecturers and all in the us um but the thing is uh, like i said again all this qs ranking is ranking universities which have all faculties Special one indeed, together with Rotarians, Rotractors, and of course MBA Diaries, having an eminent discussion lined up for all of you, the viewers. So, without further ado, let me now invite Mr. Bandula Gudege, the President of the Industrial Association of Sri Lanka, Vice President of Nestle, and Chairman of Apit Sri Lanka, to address the session with his expressions. Chairman, over to you. Thank you, uh, thank you, Kaushali. The 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 Sri Lankan students, along with our chief guest Krishna Chang, uh, very warmly welcome you for the the today's the national endeavor. So it's a, it's a great great opportunity. On behalf of I must say, uh, industrial association, all these you know the commercial aspects and all the universities, I take that uh, opportunity to welcome you and also. It's a privilege for me to say welcome address as well. So um, today we have a very good companions like Intrax, the Rotax, and also the Apit uh, combined together uh, and 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 doing something to the the, the 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 nation. So it's it's basically the great initiatives that you know run by Dr. Rohan Tatukora, the inviting uh, Trishna Chang for uh, to share her view. and also the great services to our sri lanka honestly is is we will really appreciate the fact that what you are doing there and it's a great great uh, the results that you're getting from sri lankan students where i can see their uh, smiles and flourishing moods there so i'm i'm sure they are really really enjoying and they get take the real harvest into their 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 life to serve much better into the society when they are complete in their education uh, journey so once again uh, is a great thing for uh, combining together to do national endeavor uh, being a uh, the the important uh, leading university in sri lanka we are very happy to be partnering with that once again krishna thank you very much for your valuable time sharing with you and it's a great thing that uh, for, uh, without uh, take much more time i wish everybody all the very best for this uh, valuable uh, webinar or the valuable moment thank you thank you very much uh, chairman of the industrial association of sri lanka uh, representing the whole of the country's industrialist who agreed to come on board to welcome you uh, our very special guest christina chang and uh, 
I'm actually deeply honored to introduce um, Christina, who happens to be the GM for RVI Group, the marketing representative for the Singapore Management University, the premier university in Asia in Singapore management, is internationally recognized for the world-class research and distinguished teaching established in, in 2000. SMU's mission is to generate the leading edge on research with meaningful impact and produce broad-based creative entrepreneurial leaders who will thrive in the global economy. SMU offers a wide range of bachelor's, master's, and PhD degree programs in the disciplinary areas associated with the six schools and in indiscipline, interdisciplinary combinations of those areas. SMU also offers a comprehensive suite of executive development and, and continuing education programs. SMU has an emphasis on generating rigorous, high impact and multidisciplinary research that addresses the Asian and issuing global re relevance. SMU faculty uh, collaborates with the leading international researchers and universities from USA, Europe, China and India, as well as the partners in the business community and the public sector through its research institutes, centers and labs. SMU's City Campus is a state-of-the-art facility located in the heart of the downtown Singapore, fostering strategic linkages with the business, government, and the wider community. As the Youth Service Chair for Rotary, I'm, I'm deeply uh, humbled to recognize all the 6,000 interactors, as well as about 8,000 Rotaractors who will be taking part and viewing you at different times, as you know that Sri Lanka has um, um, has will be watching this at different times because of um, certain uh, policy decisions on power. <coughs> and let me now introduce you uh, the, our our speaker, Christina Chang, who will give an introduction about this unique opportunity that uh, the government of um, um, Singapore offers through its Singapore Management University. Christina. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Rohanta. Good evening, um, Chairman, sir. Good evening, Dr. Rohanta. Uh, Ms. Kaushali, thank you very much for organizing this. Um, good evening to um, students of SMU, Sri Lankan students of SMU. Good evening, Sandy, uh, Shahani, Anagi, and Akansha. I'm really happy that uh, we were able to organize this through the Dr. Rohanta and his team. I um, really appreciate that and I do appreciate all the SMU um, students who are joining us here so that you can share information. I'm sure many students or many parents who are live here would also want to hear more from the students who are already here than myself. But um, let me just quickly give a, a, a short um, introduction of SMU. Um, before that, I guess I think... Um, for Singapore itself, I'm sure that many of us know Singapore and, and many Sri Lankans are quite familiar with Singapore. Um, not only that it's quite near to Singapore, but because it is actually considered quite a safe country for parents who have daughters who are thinking of going overseas. Or also um, for parents who travel overseas, I think Singapore is one of the um, most, uh, one of the more popular destinations for Sri Lankans to actually come here. So I think um, I, I think one, um, it's quite a good environment for students coming over here. And also culturally, they do not go into much of a culture shock because here we are multiracial society um, whereby, um, well, not only we're talking about different races, but we're also talking about food because I think um, for most students or most teenagers coming over here, Food is quite important to them. And here in Singapore, I think you can also hear from the um, SMU students. Um, they, I, I'm sure they'll be able to find food at any time of the day. Um, I think it's quite easy whether they deliver or they actually go down to the food court. Um, and also, it's actually quite convenient. And like I said, I think safety, um, most parents' concern is safety. Um, you can actually uh, have a, a feedback from the students later um, how safe it is because some of them are staying on campus, some of them are staying off campus. So you can actually have different opinions or also um, their inputs and comments on their life here and also how they actually um, 
uh, got used to it or how they settled in or whether or not, you know, um, how, how, how they actually blended into the society here. I think a lot of them are quite comfortable. So um, with that, uh, let me actually share with you for SMU. So this tonight, I'm actually sharing on the scholarship program of SMU. Um, we actually, like what Dr. Rohanta says, that we actually are looking at um, Sri Lankan students, although we have many different students from Australia, from Russia, from India, from China, Indonesia, Korea, Japan. Um, specifically tonight, we would like to talk to you about the SMU scholarship, mainly for Sri Lankan students. Um, so um, can I just ask whether or not you guys can see my slide deck? Is it on? Thumbs up. Yep. Okay. So um, for those students uh, who are live or parents, um, if you can see on the bottom right hand corner, there is my WhatsApp number and my email. Um, you can actually email me or WhatsApp me after the session if you would like to have the link to apply for this uh, scholarship uh, for, the, for the month, uh, sorry, for the year, academic year 2022. So for this year's 2022, later on I'll be sharing, there is a application deadline on March 19 for you to submit your application. And for students, the other criteria is the IELTS, which has to be submitted by 31st of March 2020. This is for this year's application. So you'll be starting your semester in August 2022. Okay, so the, my number and my email address. So um, as what Dr. Uh, as what Dr. Rohanta was saying earlier on, we're actually looking at scholars for this year. As you can see, um, SMU graduates have the strongest employment outcomes in Singapore. And I'm actually quite proud to say our first scholar from Sri Lanka, Abhishek, is actually from St. Thomas's, And he's actually already have job offers even before he graduates in May. This is due to the fact that in SMU, we do encourage students to do internships. And it is through internships that company take on the graduates. Okay, It is a good time because for internship, not only is the company looking at you, but as a student, you yourself see how comfortable you are in terms of the culture of the company, whether you fit in the company. So the internship is more or less a tryout period. All right. Okay. Dr. Rohanta said in his introduction, we are a uh, we are actually a university in the city. I'm not too sure whether um, this is relevant for Sri Lanka, but for Singapore, definitely. If you look at our CBD or Central Business District area, this is one of the most expensive land. I guess it is probably like if you're talking about maybe um, city center where World Trade Center is in Colombo or Colombo 7 where all the more expensive houses are. It's like having a university right smack in um, the most expensive land um, in the country. So basically, if you look behind the yellow one, this is a central business district. And that's where our so-called our students playground is here. Like we always like to say the playground of SMU is behind because why? We are Singapore Management University, um, business management, IT, law, psychology, and all. Why is this our background? Because the central business district, all the offices, the, the, the um, law offices, um, the various uh, financial sectors are all at the back. So SMU students do have the taste of what it is like to be within the financial sector or the business sector in Singapore. So in SMU, sorry, uh, for in SMU, what I'd like to say is if you can find us on our website, but um, it's always proud for us to let you know that it is the first city campus in Singapore. Um, when we look at admission, we look at not only the academic, but also whether the student has done other extracurricular activities. Um, just now before coming in, some of our students here, Shahani was just in her CCA meeting. So we not only stress on academic, but we also look at, we also want our students to have a holistic student lifestyle because basically there are, there are things beyond the classroom. So not only learning is important in the classroom, but also beyond the classroom. That's why we also um, emphasize a lot on exposure, internship, overseas exposure. Um, now we're talking about 
not only internationalization, we're talking about globalization. So students or parents nowadays, we're not talking within your backyard or outside or within your country or, or, or just international, but we're talking about global. So once a student has global exposure, one, their thinking is different. And two, this will also value add to the companies that they're going to be serving. So in SMU, we believe in um, ensuring that our students are all well prepared. They will have not only um, local, uh, not only good academic background, but they will also have global exposure. And also here, what makes SMU different? Actually, SMU is fairly different from our other traditional university, whereby we have small class size. We don't look at 100, 200, 300 in a lecture theater. They look at a small class size where there is a lot of discussion ongoing. It is almost like putting them in a company. When you have meetings, you need to have people who are able to interact, give their ideas, um, share, um, also give their opinions and all that. So we actually have small class size also because a lot of them do a lot of group work. Because we believe that in companies, you're actually put into different groups, you have different teams in your project and all. So in SMU, we also want to prepare them to be able to work in teams and within the teams, how you contribute and also um, how you do presentations. Um, later on, you can, um, the students can share how many presentations they have actually done so far. Not only presentation in the classroom, but we also encourage a lot of our students to actually enter into competitions worldwide as well. So also that in, in SMU, we also have very strong um, support in terms of career internship, of which I will share a bit later as well. Um, we support them right from day one when they come in, they actually have a career mentor. They also have academic um, support as well uh, for the students here. And also for foreign, for international students, we have also um, other counselors as well. If they feel homesick, they might miss their mom, the dad, the dog, the cat, the goldfish, you know, so you need somebody to talk to. So basically, there are people here to support you because we understand how it's like to be away from home. But after a while, I think if you can talk to some of our students here, I think um, after a while, they felt very much at home. And I think for students who will be joining us this year, you have great seniors. I mean, they are a bunch of really, really nice. They are studious on one hand, but they're also a really, really bunch, very supportive. They support one another. It doesn't matter whether you come from St. Thomas's or St. Joseph or Musius or David Balika, et cetera. When you come here, you're all SMU students and all your seniors are here to help. Okay, they are very, very supportive. Um, so in terms of community, in terms of, you know, parents might be saying, oh, what if my child can't find any friends? Believe me, the group of uh, seniors that you see here, they're always very supportive and they're always there for one another. Okay, um, so in SMU, we have basically many, many different choices. So if you can see the 11 degree choices, but they also do double degree. So the scholarship does actually provide for whether you want to do one degree, double degree, or um, double majors. So you can actually pick and choose. Now you don't have to choose your second major until you are in your second year. So you can come here, try different modules, try out what you like, and you'll be surprised for some of the elective modules that you have, you might find something that you probably never thought of, and it might be something that you will want to pursue. So there are many choices, and um, here in SMU, um, like in most of our institutions in Singapore, we need to make sure that whatever the students are studying is industry relevant. Because why? If it's not industry relevant, I think unemployment would be a, a problem. So we have to ensure that the students are equipped and also have the knowledge of what is needed in the society or needed in the country, um, because this is what um, the uh, companies will be looking for. Right now, we are all into the age whereby information is readily available. I can Google anywhere and find the information. However, as a company or as somebody, um, let's say, for example, an owner of a company or, or, or even a manager, you are looking for someone, not only for the answers, but somebody who will be able to execute for you. So your students must be able to have the relevant experience and also the relevant knowledge. So all these things we need to make, put it into a package and actually have this in an SMU graduate. 
So all our graduates later I will share with you, all of them are highly sought after. Okay, so the thing is, um, we have, sorry, we have actually new, we have actually new disciplinary, uh, interdisciplinary kind of these um, um, degrees. Now, for example, um, I guess for some students, if you study computing or IT all along in the traditional thinking, you're only doing computing. So you're doing computing plus probably other, other disciplines, but within the same other modules, but within the same discipline. However, in these days, I think graduates they do value add to com value add to companies. If let's say, for example, you're looking at cybersecurity, okay? Most guys, most people will know IT, but cybersecurity involves IT and law. Now, if let's say, for example, you do computing and law, don't you think that you are actually more valuable to a company? Because most of the people who are legal secretary, they know about the legal studies and about law. Most people will not have a, a knowledge. If they know law, they only know law. They won't know anything on computing, right? And those IT guys will only know more about IT, but they're not going to know anything on the legal side unless they read up or, or they take time to read up. However, if a student comes out with computing and law, basically these students will be well sought after. Then the other one will be politics, politics, law, and economics. Now, this is something that is also... Um, a well sought after or something that is actually new and we know that there will be high demand for this. Now the other one would be Smart City which we launched the year before. We actually have Smart City Management as well because why? Now uh, most of the countries are moving into green environments, smart cities and all. So you actually need somebody who have the relevant knowledge and the relevant experience. So. Okay, so um, this one you can find on the website. So we have many, many, many different, um, uh, uh, many different disciplines for you to choose from. I think there are students who actually look at actual science. Um, they are actually looking, some students are looking at economics and probably psychology, or, or even let's say, for example, um, business finance and also legal studies. You can do something like that. So that gives you multi-discipline across schools. So you can pick and choose what you want and you don't have to decide. Again, you don't have to decide until you are in your second year. Okay. So like you see, um, there are quite, quite, quite a lot of these interdisciplinary majors that you can actually see and refer to. Okay. Let me not bore you too much because you can find this on our website. Okay. So in SMU, like I said, um, for some students, they say, okay, so how long do I need to spend there in SMU. Now, I usually or we usually encourage our students to do all four years because you can use that time to do your internship. There is no rush. If you are in the bit that you are coming in under the tuition grant or the scholarship, you have up to four years. But if you are in a rush, you can do three, three and a half or do the normal four years. If you do four years, you can do more internship because internships can be done during vacation or even during your course of studies if you know how to arrange your own timetable. So your timetable is arranged by you. I think some of the students can share that later on, how they arrange their own timetable. And some of them are also working with the professors or they're working on campus and all that. So it is up to you to manage your time. Now, let's put it this way. We are trying to give you the experience as an adult or when you start to work, okay? When you go in an office, your boss is not going to tell you, okay, nine to 10, you do this task. 12 to, two, 12 to one, you take your lunch. And from two to four, you do this task. No, right? Because in companies, they say, this is the project, you manage it, you manage your time. Whether you need to skip your lunch or you need to stay back at work is really up to you. In most companies, it's as long as you get the job done. So in SMU, the students have to make sure that they are able to manage the time and also be able to manage what they want to do and, hope, and hopefully get good results out of that. Okay. All right, so again, these are quite a lot of the different wide range of uh, electives and also the modules that they have. Now, uh, earlier on, I spoken again, small class size so that you can have discussions. And I believe also, I think the, the SMU students will be able to vouch for that, that I think most of your lecturers know who you are. So whether you're sleeping, whether you're in, whether you're out, whether you're contributing, how you are in teams, who you are in the teams, I think pretty much our lecturers know who they are or our facilitators know who they are. 
and they basically um, it's good because most of the lecturers are known in the industry so they can actually also recommend for our students to be in various companies or try out different internships okay so i think the rapport group work um discussion is actually something that we look at and and and, and something that we feel proud of at smu because we're not the factory where we do 100 by, by batches of 100 to 200 out all the time in lectures whereby nobody knows anybody okay also our lecturers in smu are well-known professors they actually rank quite highly a lot of our professors have done a lot of thesis uh, workshops seminars etc so you can be rest assured that um, you are actually having a world-class education right so the other thing like i said earlier on global exposure you have to look beyond your backyard so there are a lot of different um, um, different ways that you can actually have global exposure. Some of you might say, okay, I want to go on a student exchange. I want to, now I'm studying in, in, in Singapore. I would like to experience something in say China, or I want to go to Japan, or I want to go to Europe, or I want to go to, to, to Spain, you know, to actually do one semester there. Or some of you say, no, 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 I don't want to go study. I'm okay with SMU, but I want to do, I want to contribute to the community. So you can actually do community service projects as well, whereby you can go to like Cambodia or India or Thailand or, or other countries whereby you can actually serve the community. Or we also have what you call the um, innovation uh, immersion, whereby you actually go there, visit companies, you get to know CEOs of companies, you get to see um, what is it in the companies, visit companies, various companies, and also do your networking as well. So you see, um, all our SNU students have been to different countries um, in different parts of the world. So some of these are the university partners that we have. Let's say, for example, you say, oh, I'm from Sri Lanka. Now I study in Singapore. Maybe I should go somewhere further. Maybe I should go to the UK or I want to go to the US or I want to go to Africa or I want to maybe go to Taiwan or, um, you know, or even Australia. You know, so these are the, the various choices that you can actually go to um, who are the partner universities of SMU. So we do kind of exchange program. Okay. And the other one, of course, like I said, global immersion, where you can actually talk to various CEOs, you can work with the founders, you can actually go there, see how the companies are like and all. So it's always very, very important wherever you are, networking is very important so there's nothing wrong with getting to know people from elsewhere okay so there are study missions and also there is community service projects okay so if you guys would like to um probably spend two weeks out of the out of your internet i mean two weeks uh, on a global exposure you can go to the mountains you can go to nepal the philippines um africa and all that and do something i think this is very very enriching for students when you go there and serve the community you come back very different and your outlook in life is also quite different okay all right so these are world ranking also for Sri Lankan students and parents. Um, also uh, for your information, your SMU and USNTU or the six universities in Singapore are also under um, also listed in the University Grants Commission in Sri Lanka. Um, and also previously when we first started our scholarship program for Sri Lankan students, we have already also um, got the endorsement from the Ministry of Education in Sri Lanka. So they pretty much know that there's this scholarship Okay, all right, then the other thing that we can share with you is more than nine in 10 of us secure jobs within the first six months of completing their final examination. Well, well, actually, like I said, I'm proud to say that some of our students, even before the final examination is out, the student has been offered a job already. And basically the monthly salary it's about, I think the student tells me this is quite a good salary. I think they, uh, they can be fairly happy. Um, on average, they are looking at about 4,358 Singapore dollars per month. In internship, if I'm not wrong, the last time we, I spoke to the students, they're looking at between 800 Singapore dollars to about 1,002 Singapore dollars. That would be probably about 2.2 lakh Sri Lankan rupees per month is what they're earning from internship. So if they'll be earning the salary, which is all salary goes back to the student, 
you don't give back to the companies or you don't give to the Singapore government. Um, the average salary is about 4,003. That works out to about 6.3 lakh Sri Lankan rupees. Okay. And also, um, I know that more than six in 10 secure job offers even before graduate. And a lot of them, we do receive job offers. Reason being because they are already in the industry doing internship and meaningful internships. So this is where our graduates can get that kind of opportunity. Okay. Okay, so how do we prepare? Because we basically know that students have to be prepared from the time they step into SMU. Like I said, you do have a career coach, you have a mentor, you have people actually there on the ground to help you. I think some of our scholars can share with you um, who has helped them through and how they were able to get through SMU, talking to the mentors, talking to the guidance, uh, career guidance people, even talking to their own academic professors. So there's quite a lot of help available in um, SMU. Okay, so year one, they have career planning, year two, year three. So all these are there for you already. So make full use of it when you do come to SMU. There are people there to guide you, to support you, and to help you. Okay, so there are actually even courses like how do you sit down for a Japanese meal or how do you sit down for a Chinese meal, you know, or how do you use the, the, the dessert spoon, okay, how do you dig from culinary from in and out or out to in, how do you hold a wine glass, how do you hold a knife, steak knife versus how do you hold a dessert fork. You know, things like that. There is also um, workshops on, on this because a lot of you will be um, entertaining customers or you guys will be going out for a, a board dinner, um, you know, things like that. So how do you act? What do you do? What is what wine glass for white wine, wine glass for red wine, you know, things like that. It's good to learn and it's also good for, for, for your own self-awareness as well. Okay, so internship. As I said, there are internships available. Um, both locally as well as overseas. Um, there are a lot, a lot of support from the university. Okay, so um, also some students in the last, um, the other webinars that we have conducted have asked us, so what else do you do? What else can I do besides study? So basically, we have more than 150 student clubs. I think some of these clubs, I can let the um, SMU students uh, let you know what they are. Um, we have from indoor to outdoor sports to clubs to debate teams to, to um, music to dance and all. So everything is actually there. It is actually a, quite a vibrant campus because a lot of them do CCA after class. Um, a lot of them stay back quite a lot. And I think they treat the university as their first, first home, not even second home. I think you, a lot of them are on the university grounds most of the time. Okay, we also have residences, but it's not compulsory that for students to stay. A lot of them, some of our students here have already, when they first came in, they didn't stay on campus. They're already looking for outside lodging. Or some of them have actually moved in, stay on campus, found a good group of friends, and then they actually moved out and stayed elsewhere. So the choice is yours. Um, we do have single rooms or double rooms. So we do have, you can see here, there are single rooms, single rooms, no sharing. Um, there is twin rooms where you can share with your roommates. Okay. All right. So um, basically now let me just share with you. Um, for most students who are actually offered a space at SMU, the first um, not so-called scholarship or what we call in Singapore a tuition grant. This tuition grant comes from the Ministry of Education, which covers close to about 45 to 48% of the tuition fee. After which students who have the tuition grant, but not the scholarship, they can actually have an interest-free tuition loan or study loan, which can be um, uh, uh, paid over a number of years. So there's no interest during the time that you are studying. So basically, you can take this yearly, annually, the tuition fee loan and the study loan. And actually, some of our students use this to cover other expenses. Or some of them actually use part of the loan for buying laptops or part of the loan for their living expenses as well. Now, then there is, of course, the scholarship for international students. Now, there are a lot of scholarships available, but... Um, like I said earlier on, Prima Salon Scholarship and the SMU International Scholarship. There's also the, the, the Shirin Foza Scholarship, but this one is more for girls. Um, the Prima Scholarship, I think a lot of you know the Prima Group. 
in Sri Lanka. I think they've been in Sri Lanka for the longest time. So the Prima, uh, Prima Group in Sri Lanka is one of the sponsors and they actually have a sponsor per annum amount. So yearly is 22500 to cover your tuition fee. The other one is the SMU International Scholarship. This one is actually by the Shangri-La Group. Because um, the Shangri-La Group, which is under the Court Group in Singapore, has many different businesses from hospitality to shipping to uh, real estate, etc. So they are also looking at deserving Sri Lankan students to actually come to Singapore to study at SMU. Okay. Now, for the scholarship, I must say, uh, we are looking at scholars per se. So scholars, please make sure that we are looking at preferably for local A-levels, at least two A's and a B with IELTS score or London A-levels, at least an A star or two A's. Uh, most, of our grad, uh, most of our students here, actually, if you can see, they, most of them have actually very, very good grades for the A-levels and also IELTS score. Now, I would encourage IELTS score to be nothing less than 7.5. 7, 7. Okay, because most of our school, uh, most of our students here actually have quite high um, band scores for their IELTS as well. So the Prima Salon Scholarship was actually for your full four years of studies uh, at twenty two thousand five hundred per year. Okay, so this is the first scholarship. The second scholarship is the SMU International Scholarship that is eighteen thousand seven hundred and fifty. And of course, we also, but this is mainly for girls. This is the uh, Shireen Froza, uh, uh, Froza uh, Scholarship. This one is 15000 per academic year. Okay. And all these three scholarships is non-bond scholarship. The only bond part is actually the Singapore government tuition grant. Okay. So that's all from my end. Um, if you want my WhatsApp number and also my email address, so feel free to um, contact me uh, if you need any further information or you would need to or you want to send in your application. Application closes on the 19th of March for the application itself and for the IELTS submission is on the, on the 31st of March 2022. So um, I have uh, with me our students um, Shahani, uh, Anagi, Akansha and Christian. Christian, hi, good evening. I haven't seen you in a long time. So thanks for coming. Um, I guess Mr. Rohanta, a, I, I guess Mr. Uh, Dr. Rohanta, would you like me to ask them questions or would you just let them do the sharing? Um, we, shall we first listen to uh, what they want to say? And there are some questions that has come up on WhatsApp to me, which oh, I really? will ask, yeah. Uh, I, I, shall we first listen to a few Sri Lankan students? I think maybe we can get each of them to introduce who they are, what they're doing, what their majors and their experience in SMU or why they chose SMU because quite a lot of them have a lot of choices. So why did they pick SMU and how SMU benefited them? I think maybe this is something that um, they can start off with. Would that be good? That would be fine, uh, Christina. Great, great, great. So, um, okay, from my screen here, I can actually see. Sandy, would you like to start first? Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, everybody. I hope you can hear me. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Um, so, my name is Sandy Shwara, but people in Singapore call me Sandy because I think not, not, not many people can pronounce Sandy Shwara, so go figure. Um, so, I'm in my third year now, and I'm from Devi Balika. Um, um, I'm doing psychology, so my degree is psychology, sociology, and political science, but I'm majoring in psychology. Um, why did I come to SMU? Um, I mean, it's quite complicated, but I, SMU is the only international university that I applied to, the, because I was planning to go to Colombo, <laughs> and um, somewhere in the middle, Christina appeared in my school, and then... <laughs> I my dad was quite uh, supportive and I was quite interested in psychology and I don't I don't think there's like a very established psychology degree back home so um I decided to just apply for the like to try it out and then because I was accepted I came <laughs> yeah that's pretty much it 
Is there anything else that I should talk about? <laughs> Nice, nice. Uh, I mean, it's lovely to see a Sri Lankan enjoying yourself uh, in, a, in, in Singapore and uh, it's actually an honor for us to see you there. Um, thank you, Sandish. Thank you. Hey, uh, Anagi. Hi, Christina. Uh, hi, everyone. <coughs> I hope you guys can hear me. Yep. Um, so my name is Anagi. Um, I went to Bishop's College back home and right now I'm studying economics and finance at SNU and I'm in my third year so I'll be graduating next year. Um, and I think um, there are a lot of reasons to choose SMU. Um, uh, I was considering even studying back home in Sri Lanka and then when I was considering you know or oh, if I do want to go abroad for my foreign, for my higher education um, you know there were so many factors to consider and what I realized what really pushed me towards SMU was that I felt that Singapore was a great place um, in the sense that it was close by to home, but you still get this world-class education. Um, and SMU also gave me so much of flexibility because um, I was still figuring out what I wanted to do. Um, and SMU gave me a lot, like the chance to kind of put, um, you know, even though I'm doing economics and finance, I got to do a lot of modules, which, you know, are a little broader, like I've done a module in philosophy, I've done a module, like a um, lot of, like a lot of broad exposure, even though you go deep into your discipline. And I really liked that about SME. Um, and also because it was close to home, you know, pre-COVID, it was very easy to go back and forth. And, you know, it was, um, it was nice to be in a developed country, but still in Asia and, um, yeah, I, I think it was a really good decision for me because I've personally, personally made a really great bunch of friends here and um, I've done a couple of internships and it's been a really fulfilling university experience so far for me. And Anagi also has actually got quite a number of awards as well. So she's still, as, as, as what her school call her, a very modest student. Um, Anagi has actually achieved quite a lot, um, not only in SMU, but outside with international competitions. Thanks, Christina. I think you're being a little too kind, but um, I think SMU does give us a lot of opportunities though, because they, um, I think anyway, I think everyone knows that Singapore, you know, it's quite fast paced. So, you know, SMU also pushes us and prepares us for this, I guess, because they, you know, encourage us to, you know, push, like go out of your comfort zone, whether it's taking part in competitions or whatever it is. So, yeah, I think credit would go there as well. Uh, we're, we're really um, uh, proud of you, Anagi, and um, it's excellent that you're doing a uh, a combination of economics and finance because uh, the world is in a spin uh, because of the war and uh, most most countries around the world are challenged with so many economic forces that I suppose uh, you know the what you are focusing on is going to be so useful um, even back home and to you also. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, Akansha, you're up next. Hi, um, I I think everyone can hear me, right? Yeah. Um, so hi, I'm Akansha. I'm I'm like I studied at St. Bridget's Convent. Um, I was there for like all my life. So and then I came to university to SMU. Um, I'm currently majoring in economics and strategic management. Um, so I think for me also, SM, I always wanted to go to a foreign university. Um, but I had a few choices. I was considering like Australia, Singapore, and the UK mainly. Um, and for me, I chose Singapore and in particular SMU for a few reasons. So first of all, it was the distance because um, I wanted to, you know, face COVID times again. Um, it was so much easier to travel and even for my parents to come visit and things like that. So it was very nice. And even the climate and all, it's, it's very similar to Sri Lanka. Um, and I really like that about Singapore. Um, secondly is the fact that uh, similar to Ranagi, that there was a lot of flexibility because I knew I wanted to do economics, but I didn't know what I wanted to, you know, do my second major in, for example, or like, you know, what career path I wanted to choose. Like I was very, very lost. And I, SMU gives you that flexibility. Um, and I think lastly, it was the fact that, um, or what I've heard, like before I came to SMU, I heard that, you know, they give a lot of opportunities, whether it's for internships, whether it's just to get global exposure, whether it's to meet people of different cultures. 
Um, and I'm, I think, really happy to say that I've experienced all of these things. Uh, I've done a few internships, I've taken part in some global competitions, I've taken some really interesting modules. So um, I think one word to say would be that um, SME gave me this holistic experience, uh, experience that I always wanted to. Um, and, and somewhere in Asia, like I didn't have to go outside Asia to get that, which was very nice for me. And I think um, looking back now, like I'm in my third year now, and I think it was a good decision I made. Yeah. Thank you so much, um, Akansha. It was lovely to hear you. And um, I really like your perspective on, on other than school, what you enjoy there. And uh, we'd like to wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's nice to be here. Christian, OK, you're the only boy. Come on. The rose among the thorn. Uh, hello, hello. Uh, so um. Uh, I studied at St. Joseph's and from, from St. Joseph's, I went straight to SMU. So I took a gap year uh, in between. Uh, at SMU, I'm currently, uh, I'm currently doing a bachelor in business management and I'm uh, majoring in finance analytics, which is a, a, a track under finance. Uh, so my main reason uh, for choosing SMU, at least for the business course, was just purely because of the amount of choices that I had. Uh, so the business course, especially at SMU, as in this is true for any course in SMU, but uh, I feel like especially for business, there's a lot of uh, majors to choose from. Uh, there are quite a few and you, you have a lot of freedom in terms of uh, how you want to uh, take your subject. So that really appealed to me, which was one of the main reasons why I uh, chose SMU and also yeah I think the others pretty much covered it as well uh, how it's close to Sri Lanka uh, at least now it's a bit tough to fly to and from as often as we would like to but I feel like still relatively it's easier because it's because it's not too far away from home uh, and yeah and Singapore is just a great country to live in I feel like all of us can attest to that uh, it's yeah it's a really nice country to live in the people are great and I'm sure you know you uh, the people who are watching this would know something about Singapore as well. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm currently in the library actually. So it's 10 p.m. Uh, Singapore time. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty normal as an SMU student to be in the library uh, at this time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there are actually a lot of people here right now as, as I speak. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, as in the workload is a lot, but it's, it's very fulfilling. And uh, yeah, I'm, I think Christina spoke a lot about how uh, a lot of the courses are quite practical based and they teach a lot other than just uh, textbook learning. Uh, so yeah, so far I've had a great time at SMU. Lovely uh, to hear you, uh, Kishan, and uh, um, it's fantastic how you're using the maximum out of it. It's lovely to hear that you're yet in the library reading um, but there's so much of youthful vigor in your eyes when I hear you, see you. Um, so I'm really, really, really proud of you. Please don't stay out too late, okay, Christian? All right. <laughs> okay, um, I think she's the youngest of all of us, uh, all of you. Uh, Shahani, up next. But she's actually one of the most live wire among them. <laughs> Oh okay. my god, okay. <laughs> Thanks for the honor, Christina. Yes, I'm the youngest and I'm really proud about it because <laughs> I have a lo lot of elderly people to take care. <laughs> <laughs> okay, joking. Oh, okay. So, hi, I'm Shehani. So, in Sri Lanka, I went attended Leeds International School and I moved here here in 2020. Yeah, I matriculated into SMU in 2020. And currently I'm uh, majoring in operations and strategic management. So I'm from the business school. So other than studies, yeah, I'm interning at this place right now, which is pretty cool. I'm interning as an operations intern. And also before this, I kind of worked in school also. So yeah, you can kind of work in school. Uh, while you're studying because you have uh, yeah a limited like like a limited number of hours even during term time you can work so it's pretty cool 
Um, if you were to ask why I chose SMU, it's because I always um, wanted to study abroad. And this is a funny story, but this is the only university that I applied to. And I was lucky enough to get the offer. Yeah. So, and in terms of uh, what I feel is, if you take Singapore, like living abroad, I feel like it when you move out at such a young age, it allows you to explore the whole idea of like living independently. And I kind of like it. It comes with a lot of like ups and downs, but it also allows you to grow a lot as a person because you have to kind of be responsible for what you do. So I think in terms of that, I have learned a lot um, moving out of home. And also Singapore, you get to meet a lot of people because um, there's people from all over the world and you have a lot of friends. It's nice to speak to them because they have like very different life experiences. They grew up in like they have childhood stories that are very different from us. So it's always really nice to listen to people, talk to them. That's what I really enjoy about the country. And also, I really need to emphasize as a girl, in terms of safety, it's really safe because I don't know. I'm, it's, I'm not over exaggerating, but compared to like a lot of other countries in the world, I think uh, in terms of law enforcement, it's actually very low to um, experience. Like you, re I mean, you really rarely hear about crime. So I think uh, I really um, enjoy the freedom that I have here as a girl. I can just literally like go around um, and enjoy. Yeah. So in terms of that, I really also like the like the fact that I'm living here. Yeah. In terms of safety too. Um, okay. So outside of school, um, it's not just about like I know when it comes to Singapore, the curriculum it's really rigorous, and you um, there is a change when it comes to like the Sri Lankan education system and the education system in Singapore, but. What I'm saying is it's not just about studies. There's a lot of other things that you can explore also. Maybe joining CCS that you love and yeah, um, getting onto leadership positions in school. It allows you to grow as a person. It allows you to um, work in teams that, uh, with representatives of people with like different nationalities. So yeah, I'm enjoying my uh, life here. Yeah. And uh, so Shahani is actually staying on campus right now. So she's actually in the um, uh, student hostel. Yeah, this I think she's in the living room, a common area in in yeah in yeah. yeah. So um, I think Christian Christian also previously stayed there. No, right? he's he's living here right so, now. Well, yeah, okay, so Christian's yeah. over there. staying there right now, Christian. Okay, okay. So you're not too far. That's why you better go back to your hostel soon. <laughs> He's in school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Can't, can't uh, yeah. make any promises, but I'll try. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm now I'm gonna call your father. <laughs> Kishan, yeah. your 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 rector just now spoke to me, Father Travis, just now. Okay. Uh oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Really proud of you. I, I will tell him that. Uh, Christina, can I uh, pick a few questions? What has come? Sure, please. So the first question it says that uh, he's asking, uh, are the are the degrees of SMU, a BSc, uh, Bachelor of Science in 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 business or whatever? Is, is that is that what the question is? It's not hundred percent clear, but a question is coming out. Um, basically, if you see the 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 degrees, we yes, it's actually under the bachelor. Okay, so if it's from the business school, it would be the BSc, right? Akasha, and oh no, none of you are in business school. Um, so even for uh, economics, it's actually um school of Eco school of economics. The degree is a bachelor of science. Mm. Um, yeah, but uh, yes, it's, yes, uh, yes. School of school of business, business. Is, is a is a BBM, Christina. So it's yeah. a bachelor of business management. Yeah, yeah. I was so, but what's the full? What's the full question? <laughs> uh, that he has just asked a one one line question. So I just that I asked it similarly. Uh, okay. So basically, what they can do is actually go into the website. So www.smu.edu.sg. They should be able to see that in there. If not, they can drop us a line with more specific question. Sure. So yeah. Second question coming up is, uh, how long is the internship? 
uh, and 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 do you have school during that time? Okay, you want to hear from the kids or you want to hear from me? Um, um, they are not told whom, but they've just asked the question. Okay, so the internship, you can do an internship for a 10 weeks internship or some of the students well, they can actually do even in their third or their final year, some of them can actually do a longer internship. So most students do an average, I think an average or a comfortable average between two to maybe four. I think five is quite a lot because they have so much work that they do or so much projects that they do and extra uh, the, what we call CCA, the co-curricular activities. Um, they actually do that, but the internship is around 10 weeks. They actually start from year two. Um, they don't start too, too, too early also because in, the, in terms of the knowledge and, and the, you know, the, the academic part of it, you know, when you're in year one, you may not have that kind of knowledge and all that. So usually after when they're done with the year two, that's when they actually do the internship. So it's about a 10 weeks internship, but some of them, what they do is they actually get about three to four days um, in the company and then they actually come back to school um, to do their modules. So like I said, the flexibility is there, how they manage their time. Because some of them can work out with the company and say, okay, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, if I don't have my classes, right, I will work for the company Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then after that, I will go back to school in the evening on Thursday or, or morning class on a Thursday. So they actually do have that kind of flexibility. I think um, Mark Ansha or Anaki can also share further with this. And Shahani is actually working on campus now. So she's working while doing her classes as well. I think Sadisha, uh, Sandy is actually working with her professor as well. And I think, Christian, are you working at the gym or something? No, okay. Uh, no, that's, that's uh, Kevan. Okay, Kevan. Okay, so do we have another one that actually works on campus as well. So maybe um, Anagi, Akansha, you guys can share or, or, or Shahani and Sandy. Um, yeah, I think I can just uh, like briefly explain this process. So the internships can either happen during our holiday period. So we have two semesters and between the breaks of the semesters, usually is when the majority of us do like our internships because we can go to work five days a week. But uh, that being said, I think um, you can also, um, even with the student pass, you can work for a number of hours during the school term. So you can take some part-time work um, like what Shahani is doing um, or um, to with your studies as well, because your university schedule is um, very flexible. So you can do part-time work during the semester as well, but majority of us just do it during our break time. Yeah. Um, there's a question coming, which says that um, once you finish your degree, uh, would you stay back in Singapore or would you want to come back to Sri Lanka? <laughs> Do you want me to step out of the room with this? <laughs> Anybody? Uh, you can say I want to go. Like I want to go. Um, I think um, so. I think most of us are actually on the Singapore government tuition grant. So um, how that works is that we get a like a subsidized tuition fee, and we have we are supposed to work for a Singaporean entity for three years after we graduate. Um, but this can this doesn't necessarily have to be in Singapore. Um, it can even be back home. It can be anywhere else. But I know, like just talking, because uh, we've had this discussion as well amongst like you know the few of us. Um, like Singapore is a great country to live in and I'm sure um, I think all of us would like that a little bit of work experience here. Um, I think in terms of whether we want to settle here afterwards, I, the opinions kind of differ. I, I think quite a lot of us do want to come back home eventually, you know, because we have our families, you know, um, so we have so many roots back home. So we want to, you know, go back, uh, at least personally, I know that's what, something that's always been on mind, you know. Um, you know keeping those roots but getting work experience and also living in Singapore after we graduate is um it's definitely a good option as well and something that I think a lot of us are interested in um anything else anyone wants to add I think there are some students also have the opportunity after they finish the undergraduate, what they can be doing is working for, uh, like I said, whether it's a Singapore company or as long as the company is registered in Singapore, it doesn't have to be a Singapore company or a company registered in Singapore, they can be in Sri Lanka, Australia, US, UK. I think for most students, I think it would be also where your career takes you. 
I think job opportunities where career like for example if Prima if Prima decides that you know and, and, and they get a good job offer they can be working for Prima Singapore but based in Sri Lanka or they can be working for the the, the Quark group well, which is um, the Quark Singapore um, the Shangri-La group and working in China or basically back in Sri Lanka as well or some students they will say okay I give myself three to five years I serve my bond I will do I will be working in Singapore but I can do my master's part-time because at SMU we also have our master's program and PhD program but it doesn't stop the students when they have a full-time job they can actually pursue the master's program part-time as well and actually um, the opportunity that is good if they continue to work here for a little while is that if no matter what workshop what seminar what the uh, 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 things that, that's provided by SMU SMU graduate gets to attend all these workshops seminars um, all these for free so they can actually even get I mean, get themselves improved while they are actually working. They can actually attend workshops um, in 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 uh, in SMU itself, conducted by SMU by other companies or talks or things like that. They actually get access to that free. So I think it's good for them to take advantage of it because they're all very young, and it's actually a good time to actually take in the knowledge, the experience, learn about things, and do a lot of networking. Because I mean, like right now, it's global, right? Not only in Sri Lanka, you have so many multinational companies and all that. So I think it's actually good. But I think it's actually good, like what uh, Anagi says, and I think it's always good to return back to your roots. Right. I think it's good. Uh, interesting question coming up. Has any of our friends from Sri Lanka been on the overseas um, excursion oh, of climbing mountains? Trip. <laughs> yep, I think uh, climbing mountains. And uh, uh, how did you get your uh, visa? Uh, I, I think what she's what they're recommending is that when you go out of Singapore, you have certain different, uh, I think what you showed, Christina. And I guess uh, the overseas exposure and how they're, yeah, they're yeah, doing they and how did they, they go overseas, visa. right? Um, basically, I think one of them will be ongoing soon, right? Um, and basically, you see, the thing is, one, they are actually on the student visa here in Singapore. So they are, coming, they are also going through the university. So it is very different from if the person is from Sri Lanka and going to these places, there may be a visa issue. But because they're actually SMU students, they have a Singapore student visa, uh, student visa as well, right? The Singapore student um, they are approved here, they are in the approved university. So whatever exchange program they do, I don't think there's so much of an issue. Yes, they will still need to get their visa, but the requirements would be somewhat different because they are going through the university. Great question coming up. It says, I'm a sportsman. I already have three scholarships to Turkey, in, in Germany, and in Austria. Uh, I also have entrance to a Sri Lankan university uh, as I got four A's. Uh, why should I join SMU? Okay, I'm not going to do the marketing part. So I'm going to let the SMU students decide. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyone you want to take this up? I think most of them here have um, also been offered locally as well. So yeah, okay, um, so go ahead. I think I'll just take, I think others will have different opinions, but I think, um, I think it really, for me, it would be what my priorities are. Like, um, I think most of the universities mentioned are either in Colombo or um, Europe. So firstly, I think it's a decision of what you want, what you want to achieve through a university. Um, and for me, it was definitely the financial aid, so the scholarship thing, so which I think all four of your boxes tick. Uh, but most importantly, for me, it was also like I wanted to go to somewhere which was close to home, but I wanted to be away from home. So that was a top priority. Um, and even things like the exposure I get in terms of um, conversion to a job for an internship opportunity, when it's so much harder to get in other countries, um, I had at least some kind of potential in Singapore. So in terms of that, that is why I selected SMU or Singapore. But I think for each of us, it, the answer differs. Um, and I think it just depends on your priority and what is at the top of your checklist. 
um, in what you want in university for your undergraduate studies. Yeah, I'm just uh, adding to what Akansha said. I think it uh, really, yeah, just basically adding on to what she said uh, for this person. Depends on the sport that you're doing because uh, SMU does offer tons of sports, really. Uh, there are multiple uh, CCAs, which are core curricular activities that are sports-based, which you can join. Uh, I mean, the scholarships that they offer to Sri Lankans aren't sports scholarships. And uh, as as far as I know, I, I don't think they offer sports scholarships like that. But but yeah, I mean, uh, so we have... Uh, so Abhishek isn't here right now, but but he's he's in the SMU rugby team and uh, he's, he's doing pretty well there. So... Uh, yeah, I think it really depends on what you want to do. But uh, if you are looking for a sports scholarship, then I think it might. I think Christina can advise you better on that because, as far as I know, I don't think SMU offers sports scholarships. But there are tons of sports that you can take uh, that you can be a part of uh, once you join SMU. Yeah. I think I think if anybody, if you are a sportsman, two things, right? Some of the some of the students here are sports um, people as well in their colleges and all. They've represented their colleges, but some of them, after coming here, they have tried out other sports. But if you want to continue your sports, there's two things. Um, uh, he mentioned Abi Sheikh. Abi Sheikh not only played in SMU rugby, but he also played for clubs here in Singapore as well. Um, and he continued his rugby. Um, there are other students who are here, but not from SMU, but they continued their sports. So if you want to continue your sports, like I said, depending on what it is, um, you can continue your sports here. But in the end, why do you want to choose SMU over the other countries? Um, two things I just need you to think about. If you feel that Germany or Austria or Turkey is a place that you would like to go, I think I encourage you to go. But if it's Singapore and, and you are looking at long-term career, now, all of them here are using SMU as a vehicle. Let Don't talk about university. Talk about five years after university. What are you, Where are you going to find your job? Is the place that you're going to, are there jobs available? Is the, kind, is the place stable? And are you able to find internship opportunities and on top of that, internship opportunities leading to a career or a secure job. Because, I mean, let's put it this way. Let's face it. Your study years, 13 years in school, finishing your A-levels, four years university. That's done. Done, done for academics, right? You're looking at your future. The reason why these companies are also giving a scholarship is also giving you an opportunity and hopefully... Maybe one of these um, students here would like to join the company, maybe in Sri Lanka, so that you have the concept on how Singapore companies would like to have the people think or uh, what the people should be doing. And, and, and the, 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 I guess the companies, what the companies like about um, SMU or SMU students is that one, they take initiative to do things. They can work independently as well as work in teams. They know how to problem solve. They think out of the box and they do quite a lot of presentations. I think people like Akan Shahana, Yi, Sandy, um, Christian, or even Shahani, they have actually pitched themselves against not only students in Singapore or SMU, but they've pitched themselves against students in the US, in the UK and all. So the main thing is, can you find a job? Is the university good enough to actually groom you into somebody that a company would want to employ. Because ultimately, we're not looking at where you come from in your bachelor's. In the end is, where can I find the job? Because in the end, you need to support yourself, you need to support your family, you need to support the people around you. So we are all looking at a pathway to career. It doesn't stop at the university. Christina, I think uh, I'm, I'm actually, uh, I mean, I've been knowing you for the last one year. But I think I have an immense amount of respect for you from what you just now said. You know, I think it's one of the best advice I have seen that a youngster could get. You know, uh, point one is how you said it's not the course you follow or the degree you follow. It's what you want to do at the age of 23, 24. I mean, that's so, so true. You know, uh, when, when I even when I look back, you know, having gone to Harvard also and studying, you know, I realized that, you know, the journey that I took, if I have to do that journey again, 
I will do that same journey because that journey has got me to the place where I want to be. And, and it's only because, you know, I decided what I want to be at the age of 23. So I think, thank you so much, Christina, for that. And the second point you said very rightly is that at the age of 23, you know, whom do you have to support? What kind of uh, lifestyle that you need to have? You got to determine uh, so that then you know where you want to take your journey to. So I think, uh, uh, to be honest, uh, on behalf of the Sri Lankan students, uh, uh, Christina, you know, since I teach in the many universities in Colombo and Sri Davidanpura and places, uh, and of course, you know, being in the private sector, uh, I, I think I, I must thank you for all the advice and the career guidance you've given our youngsters because I'm I'm hundred percent sure that they are in very good hands um, with, with people like you. Uh, there are two questions coming in, Christina. Maybe then we can close it by eight o'clock Sri Lanka okay, time. Sure. Four minutes more. Yeah. Uh, one question yeah. they're asking you is: uh, if you take a university, a premium university in Sri Lanka, it's ranked seven ninety four. SUM, SUM is ranked at 774. Uh, uh, how important is this rank uh, when, you, when you are to select your, your future degree? Very interesting question. Actually, it is true. Um, but the thing is, unfortunately, uh, in, in SMU, it's not a full tradition. Um, it's not a full university, meaning we do not have medicine, we do not have engineering, we do not have biology. So the QS ranking, if you're probably either looking at the Times ranking or the QS ranking, you be, it's a bit difficult to rank SMU this way. But if you rank the SMU business school is on par, is uh, probably for one of the young university is one of the top ranking university. Now, I do not believe, and um, please uh, forgive me if I say this, None of the none of the government university in Singapore is solely is lowly ranked. NUS and NTU is world ranking eleven. So SMU is the third university in Singapore. Now, because it is not a full fledged university in a sense that it doesn't have engineering, doesn't have medical, it's very hard for them to rank the the, the university overall. However, please take a look at SMU's ranking in terms of research. SMU in terms of the business school. I think SMU's MBA and business school outranks NUS as well, um, or rank as, as good as what NUS is, if most of you understand. I, I guess most Sri Lankans know NUS more than at the rest of the university, because I think many years ago, there are a lot of Sri Lankans who are here as lecturers and all in NUS. Um, but the thing is, uh, like I said, again, all this QS ranking is ranking universities which have all faculties. SMU, again, is called Singapore Management University. So if you want to look at QS ranking, that's fine. But I'm sure um, University Grants Commission in Colombo will not rank universities that are not properly ranked. And SMU is on there and it is a government university. Maybe on top of that, I can just share. I, I, I think it's good. I, I think it's, 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 it's a good question because students may be aware and say, oh my God, and maybe in three years time, if I go to SMU and then after that, there's no reputation of that university. And if I go elsewhere, will it be recognized? Now, the patron of SMU is the president of Singapore. Anybody sits as the president of Singapore is the patron of SMU. So that one, you can actually see that it is a prestigious university, it's a recognized university. So I hope that assures you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think, Christina, if I may add to your answer again, you know, what the, 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 world, of, the world of business has changed so drastically. I mean, since I run an AI company, I know the, the consumer has, has gone through so much of turmoil and disruption, as they call it in today's world, you know, that all the organizations suddenly realize that past practices, best theories, no more whole ground. Mm. So we have to develop new theories, new ways of reaching up to the consumer. So, so because of that, you know, uh, I suppose these ranks are not important. What is more important is, you know, like you very rightly said, uh, what you learn in the classroom and how you learn the social skills that helps you to kind of relate to yourself. So there's a last question coming up, Christina. It says that, uh, can I know who, uh, who is there in your classroom 
uh, from my Sri Lankan friends. Uh, uh, what, what nationalities are there in your classroom? Ah, okay. This one, the students, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. At every country that you can think of. Okay, go ahead. Um, I think I can, I can start. Anagi, unless, unless you want to go. No, no, you um, go ahead, Kishan. Okay, yeah, I've I've actually met uh I've I've met people from all over the world in uh, in SMU classes uh, just off the top of my head. I mean, other than Asia, I've I've met people in in the US. I've met uh I've met a few British people. I've met I mean uh okay, so most of the nationalities I'm naming right now are exchange students, but I mean they they do count as workers because they are in our classes. So yeah, the I've I've. Met a few Germans. Uh, there, there's this one Hungarian in my class. So yeah, there are there are people from all over. Uh, yeah. So uh, it's it's actually really nice because uh, so since I joined SMU, so I'm in my second year. Since I joined SMU, this sem is the first sem where there were a lot of exchange students. I think there there was a, a bit of a a block on exchange students because of COVID. So from this same onwards, I feel like there'll be lots of exchange students. So because of that, there are people from all over the world. Uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, other than exchange students, I guess majority would be uh, Singaporeans, Malaysians, uh, Indians. I uh, feel like that would be the majority. I don't know, Anagi, maybe you can add on to that. Um, yeah, no, I think you're quite right. Um, I'm also thinking the first year when we stayed at um, this university accommodation, um, we got to meet a lot of the international students. So there were a lot of like, I had housemates from the Philippines. Um, I have a housemate from Korea. Um, and then I think another interest, like you said, a lot of in students from India, but also what I really came across, which was surprising to me is, um, I guess, as the world becomes more globalized, you end up having be coming across people who haven't lived in one country um for example i one of my housemates is indian but she's lived in korea but then she moved to singapore and then you have so many combinations because you have people who've traveled all across the world and i guess maybe their parents have been expats um but yeah i think um those are just some of the nationalities that i have come across um if anyone nice. else yeah. thank you Thank you, guys. Uh, uh, Christina, nobody has asked any more questions, but I just thought I just need to ask this question because I suppose people in Sri Lanka sometimes don't ask these qu types of questions. Uh, the question is that, uh, you know, uh, how much of how much is the scholarship? Uh, I just want to ask from my friends in Sri Lanka and how much of money do you need to bring it from your home on a monthly basis? Like, how do you manage? If you could just advise, it might be helpful uh, for Sri Lankans because today the uh, dollar hit 245 rupees in a free flow market. <laughs> okay. yeah. Actually, I think the best people would probably be them to ask. Okay, now, okay, for the tuition fee, full fees, there are students who come in for full fees, it's around 40,000 Singapore dollars. Okay. And for students who actually get accepted to NUS, majority of them come under like what Anagi says is the Singapore government tuition grant. That will take about, that will probably bring your tuition fee from about 40 to over 1,000 to about 24,000. Okay, now the SMU scholarship, uh, sorry, my apologies, the female scholarship is 22000 So basically, you are paying about three to $4,000, right? Anagi, uh, uh, Anagi, correct? About three to four, five thousand. Okay, five. say 5000 5000 Singapore dollars for one year. Now, out of that 5000 you can actually, if you want to take the tuition fee loan and the study loan, which comes up to about close to about 10000 so you still have about 5000 if you decide to take the loan. If not, then the tuition fee itself will be for about 5000 per year. Um, if you take the SMU scholarship, you'll be paying around about 7000 to about 8000 per year, Singapore dollars. Okay, and then of course on top of with that, if you have a thousand seven to eight thousand dollars tuition fee to pay, the tuition fee loan and the study loan, which is interest free loan, that one is about close to about ten thousand. So you can offset about two thousand for your other expenses as well. But in terms of monthly daily expenditure, that one I think it varies from students to students. But I think if you can hear from the students, it actually will help better because they manage their own finances. I think this is a very important part. If y'all can just share this very 
uh, straightforward. It's going to help the youngsters also to understand whether they could afford it or not. Um, over. Um, hi. So I think I would just uh, like roughly this is what all of us spend um, here in Singapore, I think. So rent, depending on what kind of house do you want, do you want a single room or a double room, whether you're near the city, outside the city, it kind of depends a bit. But I would say the range is between $800 to $1,200 a month. Um, you can definitely get it for lower or like higher, but uh, I would say the average is around there. And living cost, I would set aside around four hundred to six hundred dollars a month for like a comfortable like living in terms of food and transport and these things. So yeah, that would basically be the average. So how would you how would you advise a friend who is applying for this call, uh, whether that person could decide whether he could afford or not? Like how much money do you, your parents have to cough out against how much does, do you get from this call? You know what I'm saying, uh, Akarsha? Yes, um, I think, okay, so I'll take me for an example. Um, I am on the tuition grant and the call. Um, I had to pay around, I think 5,000 extra uh, per year, I think. Um, for like to offset, that's only for the tuition fees. So what I did for that is that I took um, a loan from SMU uh, because SMU has a lot of loan programs that they give that you have to repay it. it's interest free until you graduate and you can repay it within um, 20 years if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I took it just to ease the financial uh, burden of my family. I just took that on. So I will pay it while I'm like earning. Um, so then for now, uh, my parents pay for my rent and my living costs. Uh, but obviously, because through my that, internship, uh, around, okay, so for me, I would say it's around 1,500, per month. Um, <laughs> my parents pay for that, but also through your internships and all, all the internships you get here are paid. So you can, and the internship itself, you get around 800 to 1,200 a month. So um, you can even use that money or you can do some part-time work and afford a part of your living cost. Um, so I think, um, for, for me personally, uh, like the internship money I save like for my extra expenses and I, my parents just uh, farm my living cost. But I think uh, some of us even do some part-time work and are able to own, our, um, to pay for our own living cost, like the, the 400 to $600, like in terms of food and beverage and these things. So altogether, you, <laughs> you need to like spend about $2,000 a month for your costs other than the, the scholarship? Um, yeah, I think it would be, I would say, uh, 1,500 to 2,000. Yeah. You could say around that much per month. Yeah. Anybody else like to share another view? I think I spend, spend a lot less to be honest. Uh, Christina I forgot to mention that we get an mm. allowance with the scholarship. So I get a 4,000, I think, and again, I both get a, a $4,000 allowance. So what usually happens to me is that I had to pay an extra 5,000 for tuition fees. So I didn't take any loans. So my dad spends, sends me about 7,000 per semester for like six months, like 7,000 Singapore dollars. So 5,000 of that goes for the tuition fee. And the rest of the 2,000, I keep it. And that along with the 4,000 allowance, plus any part-time work or internships that I do go for my uh, like, rent and daily spending so he doesn't send me anything else so I manage on like that one-time transfer I think for me monthly expenses doesn't go beyond $200 a month uh, okay. including transport and food and everything so it's just that plus rent and usually so I work part-time at the school and those 200 is usually covered more than like I get more than 200 for my part-time work so it's usually covered. So I think for me, my dad sends me about four, 14,000 Singapore dollars per year. That's it. Okay. That is per year. Yeah. yeah, so that averages about $1,000, $1,200 per month. Yeah. yeah. That's Singapore yeah. dollars. Am I right, yeah. uh, Christina? Yes. Yes, yeah. it's Singapore dollars. So she she works it out that way. So like you said, I think um, most of them, um, they know the finances. Um, it's up to them to manage it. So it is, I would say, quite manageable. Um, I Like I said, one, it's not 
um, I don't think that I, I cannot say that, oh, it's very cheap to live in Singapore, but I can also say that it's not that expensive if you know how to manage yourself. I mean, if you're going to restaurants every weekend and all that, then of course you definitely need a bigger budget. But in Singapore, um, if most of you come to Singapore, um, there are things, um, there are affordable eateries from the food court to the hawker center, and also some of them do cook. So you can go to the groceries, cook um, good for the week. So if you want to go to the movies every week or you decide to go on Netflix, then it's a different thing altogether. But I think all in all, most of them do manage. But I think, I'm not too sure. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I think if you do the tuition fee loan and the study loan, it's actually better than taking a loan from Sri Lanka because it is an interest-free loan. So that part, I think you guys can verify that, right? I think the loan that is extended here is actually so much better in the sense that they got 20 years and it only works out to about $100 per year. And if they are earning, I think they can pay that back on their own without having to depend on their parents, really. Again, it also depends on how these students manage themselves. But I encourage the student because the loan is there and it's available, why not make full use of it rather than get it? Because from what I know, if they borrow in Sri Lanka, the interest is to be paid every time. But here, they don't pay the interest until they graduate. And most of them graduate. And I think I would say the salary is pretty reasonable. Yeah. I think that they would earn more than what uh, probably a current graduate, fresh graduate in Sri Lanka would earn, right? Yeah. So yeah. they will earn, they probably earn, okay, so if we worked out like I presented just now, they earn about 630,000 rupees per month. Okay. So um, I think for the loan of that, if you're talking about 100 Singapore dollars paid over 20 years, and you know, I, I think that's affordable. Thank you very much, Christina. One last question. Uh, what are the stipulations of COVID, uh, Christina? Uh, how does it work right now when when somebody from Sri Lanka goes in? Okay, guys, the latest one that came in was Anagi. She went back for the weekend. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I went back for recess week recently. <laughs> she went back twice recently. <laughs> um, so... Um, Coming back to um, coming from Sri Lanka to Singapore, um, I think requirements wise, they just would need um, if you like your vaccination status. So if you, a vaccine vaccination certificate um, and then coming back this time, um, I only needed to do a rapid antigen test. So one of the uh, yeah, one of those tests. Um, and other than that, it's just like a little bit of a technicality where you just have to apply online for this vaccinated <coughs> travel pass for official permission to enter Singapore. But I think even that is supposed to change, um, Christina, I think in the next yep. few months or so, that's what yep. um, some of the news articles have said. Yeah, Singapore is pretty much opening up, um, especially if they get a offer letter from the university, that's not a problem at all for them to come in. So basically what they need to do is make sure that they have the proper vaccination and also making sure that they actually test themselves when they come in. Um, I think what, what Singapore is doing um, and moving forward to is living with COVID. So, you know, even in Singapore, if your family member is tested positive, you just make sure you isolate and test yourself for five days if you're negative, and then, then you can still go out. Thank you very much, Christina. I, I really appreciate for the service you're doing for the country. Uh, you, I, I've been seeing your commitment so much in the last one year on how you are reaching to every part of the country to give everybody an equal chance to apply. And I'm, I'm actually so grateful for you to be a friend of Sri Lanka. And, uh, and whenever you come to Sri Lanka, please do let us know. Uh, we like to host you uh, for all the great support you're giving uh, Sri Lankan um, young graduates who are, as you know, Sri Lanka is a very hospitable nation. And, uh, uh, you know, even when you stay down the road, all the neighbors are your friends. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a different culture, you know. Yeah. Um, so, so you, you, you know, when we say that we like to host you, we really mean it. And thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, thank so, you much. so much, youngsters who are doing so good in, 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 in Singapore. Uh, we, we need you to get your skill set up 
Uh, we need you back home as quickly as possible to rebuild the country. Um, I mean, uh, being a past chairman of Sri Lanka Tourist Board, Sri Lanka Export Development Board, and also working for companies like Lever uh, for about 12, 13 years, and then the UN, all I can tell you guys is that Sri Lanka will bounce back very strong. And uh, I think in my view, we, we will never get a chance in our life where you start life in a white screen. So we need to put all our financial uh, structures in place once again in the country. We need to do a new marketing plan for Sri Lanka tourism, which I offered my services to uh, being in brand marketing. And um, in fact, I'm doing two projects with the UN to rebuild Sri Lanka's carrying capacity. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely committed um, to, 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 and many, many professionals are committed to building the country. And uh, in 1960, Lee Kuan Yew said that he wants Sri Lanka, he wants Singapore to be like Sri Lanka. And, and I tell you today, we are saying that we like to take a few lessons from Singapore and yet become the miracle of Asia. So thank you so much. Thank you and, very much. Uh, and, and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye.